Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I have a fundamental sleight of hand technique that if you have in your arsenal will definitely allow you to level up your game practically instantaneously. And that is of course the automatic jog. Let's take a look at that. So what is the automatic jog? Well, as you know, jogs, in jogs, out jogs, are cards that are sticking out from the deck. And those cards can be used to mark a location that you can then cut to. Now the automatic jog is a sleight of hand technique that allows you to instantaneously, or of course automatically, be able to place a jog at the desired location and regain control of the card that you want to find from your spectator. Now, when I first started off, this was one of the things that I did the most because it created the illusion of card tracking. But in reality, it's not card tracking. In reality, it is a card control, okay? So let's take a look at that automatic jog right now. The jog works because it is being set due to friction. The friction of the movement, so as the, as the cards move, one on top of the others, they create friction. This movement of the cards in order to maintain a couple of cards protruding out while the rest of the cards move forward. So let's say that the deck has been shuffled and a deck has been cut. Once that is done, you invite your spectator in order to select any card that they want under the premise that you are going to track that card and be able to find the card without you even knowing what that card is. Let's say the spectator randomly chooses this card, the Four of Spades. You, of course, do not look at the card. You don't need to look at the card. Once the spectator has seen the card, he's going to give it back to you and you're gonna take the card and you're gonna place it on top of the deck. You will then swing cut, remember this is where the selection is, now on your right hand. Once you have swing cut, you will take this packet with all the indifferent cards, and instead of placing it on top, you're going to throw it from the back to the front to generate the friction needed to be able to make these cards down here shove outwards, or as we call it, generate an in jog, in because it's coming in towards you. So now as I throw these cards, I, as I throw this packet on top, you'll see that the friction has pushed the cards that are on top of our selection towards the back. This is what we would call the in jog. Now, from the front, as I hold the deck like this in mechanics grip, from the front, there's nothing to see. Even though I've severely exaggerated the uh, in jog, now what you're going to do is very simple. You're going to use your thumb of your non-dominant hand and you're going to push in on that. You're going to push right in here. As you push in, you also push up. So the movement is going to be in and up, okay? With your non-dominant hand, you will push in and up. And as you square everything up, notice that now I have a break with my thumb right over the selected card. Now that I'm in this position, my other hand, my, my hand that's holding the deck, I will now take my pinky and I will put it in here, into the break, that way I can let go with my left hand. But I'm still in control because my pinky is maintaining that break over there. So now all I have to do is simply cut half of the top packet and now cut to the break right here. I cut to the break and now this card is the selection. I take this packet, I drop it, and just like that, I now have complete control of the selection. As you can see, the selection is now the top card. So the jog is placed automatically. Now it's all about showmanship, all about presentation. I'll tell my spectator that uh, I'm going to 
track the card because I know that uh, the card was cut into the 33 position or the 30th position. Make up a number, whatever number you want, it doesn't matter. Now, what you're gonna do is simply give the deck a false shuffle, making sure that those cards that are on top, the top three or four cards don't move. You see, it's there. All I'm gonna do is simply drop that card last of all, okay? I'll cut to this side now and drop these cards last of all, okay? After that, if you wanna give the deck a false cut, you can of course give the deck a false cut and a strip. And of course the top card is still there. By the way, a tutorial to a very cool false shuffle and cut sequence is gonna be uh, popping up around here that you can go to and learn uh, these false shuffles. Now, once I do that, I now pause for a second and I ask the spectator for the first time, name out your card, because I'm pretty sure I've got it. Name out your card. The spectator is gonna say that it was the four of spades, and that's when you grab the top card and you reveal that yes, in fact, it is the four of spades. So this is a very simple, simple, simple principle of sleight of hand. Incredibly basic, incredibly simple, but it will definitely give you an edge. If you're starting out and you want something that's sleight of hand related, that's very basic, very simple, that in no time you can kind of get going and start performing and start showing your friends um, some cool card tricks and stuff like that, learning this very fundamental technique, the automatic jog, is definitely one of the best ways to start. And with the right presentation, with good showmanship, you could really sell and bring home that concept that you are actually tracking and steering that card to the location that you want, which in this case is the top. That is gonna be it for today, guys. I hope that this was something helpful, something useful. Um, I hope you learned something cool and new that you could use very soon in your own demonstrations and in your own presentations. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I publish new videos on gambling sleight of hand every single week. So I'll catch you next time.